1191, the Third Crusade is underway. Richard the Lionheart is on the way to the Holy Land. As he sails east, he encounters one of Saladin's allies, a Byzantine rebel called Isaac Comnenus. Isaac rules the wealthy island of Cyprus and hatches a plot to capture Richard's fiancée, the Princess Berenguela. Richard responds with force and launches one of the most remarkable amphibious operations in military history, the Crusader Conquest of Cyprus. This is the Lionheart in one of his finest moments during one of the most critical episodes of the Third Crusade. In 1189, while a motley crusader army struggled to besiege Acre in the Holy Land, Richard the Lionheart, son of King Henry II of England, prepared to set out on crusade. A learned, articulate man, gifted in music and in poetry, Richard was also a top-notch warrior and commander. When he took the throne of England at age 32, he was at the height of his prowess, having proven himself an effective conqueror since his teens. Tall, with red-gold hair and fierce blue eyes, Richard led from the front, riding alongside his men into the heart of danger. His soldiers were intensely loyal to him. The Lionheart was a force to be reckoned with. Once crowned, Richard threw himself into preparing his crusade. He was a fervent Christian and felt obligated as a king to rescue the holy places in the East. He was also committed to the poetic ideals of his age, which prized crusading as the paramount expression of valor. In addition to the funds amassed from the Saladin tithe, Richard committed his personal wealth to the crusade. He sold many of his properties to fund his war chest. By this, Richard raised an immense fleet and army. His efficiency and effectiveness demonstrated strong administrative skills. Indeed, Richard's abilities as an organizer and planner, far more than his personal valor, were at the heart of his success. This was a ruler as equally at home at the head of his army as he was tending to the tedious labors of administration. Meanwhile, the King of France, Philip II, was nothing like Richard. At 25, Philip was slight and sickly, blind in one eye, and intensely jealous of Richard, who was, in theory, his vassal. Despite these shortcomings, Philip was a calculating and shrewd man, unscrupulous in seeking his interests, and obsessively committed to the victory of his Capetian line over the Plantagenets. Unlike Richard, Philip felt no higher calling to the crusade, but was pressured into joining the expedition as a result of the mood throughout Europe. His organization was half-hearted, and the force he produced poorly funded. In addition, Philip did not command the loyalty that Richard did, and his control over his vassals was always tenuous. Richard and Philip departed in July 1190, traveling by sea with their forces to the east. Both kings stopped in Sicily en route to the Holy Land. Here, tensions flared up between Richard and Tancred, the island's ruler. Tancred had recently seized the throne after the death of King William II of Sicily, who had been husband to King Richard's sister, Joanna. Currently, Tancred held Joanna prisoner. Richard demanded that she be released, along with the full sum of her dowry. At first, Tancred resisted, but Richard quickly overwhelmed Tancred's forces, and Joanna was rescued. From then on, Joanna would be one of Richard's companions during the crusade. Unlike his other siblings, Richard was close to Joanna, and the two seemed to have had similar personalities, sharing a love of music, poetry, and horses. The Lionheart added the wealth of his sister's dowry to his well-funded war chest. At the end of March 1191, Philip sailed on to the Holy Land, but Richard remained to meet his mother, Eleanor, who arrived in Sicily with the daughter of the King of Navarre, Baranguela. This Spanish princess was to be the Lionheart's bride, and Richard greeted her with much fanfare. Richard himself sailed with his fleet for the Holy Land on April 10. However, Richard's passage was hindered by a major storm. Several ships were blown off course and wrecked on the coast of the island of Cyprus. Cyprus, famed for its vineyards and cedars, had long been a possession of the Byzantine Empire. But five years prior, Isaac Ducas Comnenus, a rogue member of the imperial family, had arrived and taken control of the island, declaring himself to be the legitimate emperor of Byzantium. To maintain his rule in defiance of the emperor in Constantinople, Isaac struck an alliance with Saladin, 
When he learned of the misfortune of some of the Lionheart's ships, Isaac at once dispatched men to loot the wreckage and capture the survivors. However, one ship in particular interested Isaac, the royal ship carrying Richard's sister and his bride-to-be. This vessel had not been wrecked, but had been blown off course like some of the others, and on April 24 dropped anchor off the southern coast of Cyprus near Limassol. Isaac knew that if he could acquire the king's sister and his fiancée, he would have a powerful tool by which to control the Lionheart. At once he dispatched messengers to the anchored ship, asking the ladies to disembark and come ashore as his honored guests. Joanna and Baranguela weren't fooled and flatly refused. On May 5th, Richard arrived, relieved to find Baranguela and Joanna safe. However, when he learned that Isaac had imprisoned some of his men, he was furious. He had once dispatched a messenger to the so-called emperor, demanding the release of his men and the restoration of the plunder. Isaac refused. He bolstered the defenses of Limassol, assembled his army, and prepared for war. Richard now launched an invasion of Cyprus, which is remembered as one of the most remarkable operations of the Middle Ages. Isaac stripped Limassol of everything that could be moved, doors, furniture, benches, chests, stone, anything that could be used to fortify the beach. Isaac then arranged his army in a defensive position behind these makeshift defenses. Richard and his men were undeterred. Rowing ashore in small boats, the Lionheart and his forces leapt onto the beach. Isaac's archers loosed a volley of arrows, while Richard personally led the charge at the enemy troops. Faced with the Lionheart's fury, Isaac's men broke and fled. Richard entered Le Masol, where his men found an abundance of wine, meat, and grain. Isaac retreated, pitching camp about five miles from the city. He declared his intention to give battle the next day, and then settled in for a night's sleep. Meanwhile, Richard unloaded his horses and had them exercised by moonlight while his scouts surveyed Isaac's position. On waking the next morning, Isaac found his camp totally surrounded. Richard launched the attack and Isaac's forces were crushed, with Isaac himself barely escaping, still dressed in his night clothes. Richard seized his enemy's standard, treasure, and horses. This victory prompted many local aristocrats to offer their submission to the Lionheart. On May 11, his support dwindling, Isaac sued for peace. That same day, Richard received a visit from two prominent commanders of the Siege of Acre, Geoffrey and Guy of Lusignan. As Duke of Aquitaine, Richard was obligated to the Lusignans, who were his vassals. Thus, Richard offered his support when the brothers requested his endorsement of Guy's claim to Jerusalem's crown. The Lusignans remained with Richard's party for an important event the following day. On May 12, in Limassol's Chapel of St. George, Richard married the Princess Baranguela. The Crusaders cheered their valiant young king and his lovely Spanish bride, who at this stage in their marriage appeared to be quite blissful. The Norman bishop, John of Evro, crowned Baranguela Queen of England. It was a fitting moment to crown the triumph of the capture of Limassol. Soon after, Isaac presented himself before Richard to confirm the peace. But Richard knew through his spies that this was a ruse. The would-be emperor was only stalling for time and weighing the Lionheart's plans. After lunch, Isaac snuck out of camp. Richard only smiled when he received the news. He now had his excuse to complete the conquest of Cyprus. Richard gave part of his army to Guy of Lusignan and ordered him to pursue Isaac. The king divided the rest of his forces into two naval squadrons, which circled the island, seizing coastal fortresses and enemy ships. Having completed this circuit, Richard returned with his troops to Limassol. Here, he rendezvoused with Guy, who hadn't captured Isaac, but had secured the loyalty of more of the island's landowners. Isaac now retreated with the remainder of his troops to the northern castles high in the mountains, Bufavento, Cantara, and St. Hilarion. Here, Isaac hoped to wait Richard out. Eventually, reasoned Isaac, the Lionheart must continue on to the Holy Land, and when he did, Isaac could sweep back down from the mountains and regain control of all of Cyprus. It was a far-fetched plan at best. However, when news reached Isaac that Richard had taken the coastal castle of Carinia, along with Isaac's own daughter, 
The pseudo-emperor lost all will to resist. He surrendered completely, requesting only that he not be imprisoned in iron shackles. Richard accepted these terms and had special silver shackles made for his defeated opponent. Isaac's daughter was placed in the custody of Queen Berenguela and the Lady Joanna. By June 1st, the whole of Cyprus belonged to Richard the Lionheart. Richard's conquest of Cyprus is sometimes viewed as a distracting prelude to the main action, but in fact, it was one of the most important achievements of the Third Crusade. Cyprus was a wealthy island and strategically positioned just off the coast of Syria-Palestine. Possession of this island provided a valuable source of provisions, as well as the perfect staging ground for future crusades. In the immediate aftermath of his victory, Richard used Cyprus to provide food, supplies, and horses to the crusaders besieging Acre. Cyprus would serve a similar function for the remaining history of the crusades, and would be a possession of Latin Christendom for the next four centuries. The Cyprus campaign is also a remarkable example of Richard's brilliance as a general, the mountainous terrain made Cyprus difficult to fully subdue, but, as John Gillingham points out, the operation was finally conceived and methodically carried out. Having secured a critical supply base for the crusade, Richard now set off to join his fellow Christian warriors at the Siege of Acre. We'll learn about that in the next video in our Third Crusade series, which is linked on your screen now. You'll also find the next video linked in the description below.